Hello everyone and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. Like so many bishops around the country, with ties directly or indirectly to the homoclerical network, Detroit Archbishop Alan Vigneron is yet another in a long line accused of ignoring complaints from victims. But in Detroit, there is a unique situation that allows him to put a little daylight between himself and any reports of this evil, at least on paper. A seminary for Polish nationals was established here to serve the growing Polish population back in the 1800s. But a large number of former seminarians tell Church Militant in the 1980s it started to become a pipeline for homosexuality and abuse. Archbishop Vigneron, however, loses his cover because he is on the board of trustees for the seminary since it's in his archdiocese. The seminary board, which again includes Vigneron and the current chancellor, are now being sued and contained within the lawsuit is the allegation that Vigneron not only ignored a complaint brought directly to him in person, but also ignored other complaints and concerns against the priest who'd been recommended to become chancellor and who Vigneron gave his blessing to to become chancellor despite those fears. All of this is part of a much larger pattern here in Detroit where Vigneron and his chancery continue to duck and weave and lie and deceive anything to keep their homo clergy network as concealed as they can, whether the members of that network are homegrown or in this case, foreign nationals. What follows now is a months long investigation special report conducted by Church Militant into the history and the charges of homosexuality and abuse at yet another seminary here in Detroit a case which, with the Archbishop's fingerprints all over it as well. Hello, I'm Michael Voris. Welcome to this Church Militant Special Report. International sex trafficking, substance abuse, homosexual harassment and hazing, a Vatican established seminary for Polish nationals here in Detroit provides yet another example of church corruption with ties to Rome and notorious abuser Theodore McCarrick. In the wake of a lawsuit by alleged victims and testimony from former seminarians, Orchard Lake Schools in Detroit is being exposed as a hotbed of homosexual grooming and assault, a gay seminarian pipeline from Poland to the Midwest, and yet another black mark against Detroit's Archbishop Alan Vigneron, who ignored victims' pleas and failed to follow up on abuse allegations. Here's Church Militant's Christine Christlieb with the details. With the strong faith that it is Jesus calling me and asking me that question, do you love me? Very Reverend Canon Miroslav Kroll, Chancellor of Orchard Lake Schools, is the priest at the center of two lawsuits alleging sexual misconduct. Kroll's prominence in the Polish-American community has put the story in the headlines in both Poland and the U.S. In the first lawsuit, Orchard Lake School's vice chancellor and the former director of the Polish mission are both claiming they were aggressively recruited and sexually harassed once hired. Also, verbally abused when they refused Kroll's advances and fired when they complained of the treatment. The lawsuit charges Kroll has a history of boundary crossing behavior, often making inappropriate and unwanted sexual advances toward younger men he had recruited to Orchard Lake schools to serve as priests, seminarians, or employees. The lawsuit also calls out a negligent board. Quote, the Orchard Lake Schools Board of Regents has abdicated its duty to appropriately investigate allegations of misconduct against Kroll, properly supervise his conduct, or otherwise stop his abusive behavior. That board includes Springfield, Illinois Bishop Thomas Paprocki, Detroit Archbishop Alan Vigneron, Detroit Auxiliary Bishop Robert J. Fisher, and retired Detroit Auxiliary Bishop Francis Reese, founder in 1974 of the Detroit pro-gay group Dignity. In the second lawsuit, 
filed within six weeks of the first. A father and son allege the son, a student at Orchard Lake School's St. Mary's Preparatory High School, was attacked at a retreat with other boys attempting to force him to participate in sexualized games. When the school's headmaster, Bob Piles, dismissed the father's complaint as three on a scale of ten, the father, who was also a faculty member at St. Mary's, took his son's case up the chain to Chancellor Kroll, who fired the father the next day. These recent charges point to a culture of corruption that has been festering at Orchard Lake for decades. Former seminarian Vyaswaf Volavender describes being assaulted by a priest at Orchard Lake more than 30 years ago in 1989 when he was a young seminarian from Poland. Me and Paul, Mass, were walking. At one point, Mass turns on to me, drop his hand, on my front end, he says, I like it, on the front. Grab me, bottom up. Volavender's best friend was assaulted even more brutally that year. Faculty members knew about it and did nothing. He knew specifically about that assault that happened to Peter at the seminary on the second floor by that seminarian who and ended up going to Newark, New Jersey, was ordained by, I believe, McCarrick, and is serving as a pastor right now in New Jersey. Father Richard Bernard, a Polish seminarian at Orchard Lake in the early 2000s, himself a victim of sexual abuse at another seminary, explains why these behaviors have persisted over decades. My understanding is, you know, that there, there's a high number of predators in the seminaries because of the, of the prey being so vulnerable. You know, uh, we, we, you don't have voice and you can be dismissed for no reason whatsoever. During Father Richard's time at Orchard Lake, a seminarian was deported for sex trafficking. Within months of arriving in the U.S., that seminarian had built a network of St. Mary's Preparatory High School boys willing to sexually service the client base he had established. In connection with the lawsuit, a former seminarian describes his experience with another seminary priest. It was late, but I was a seminarian and I had been summoned by the priest. So I came to see him. He noted that I must be lonely and told me I was handsome. He then asked to kiss me. Orchard Lake School's seminary, St. Cyril and Methodius, was established specifically for Polish nationals. Its seminarians are particularly at risk. I knew no English when I came. None? None. Uh, that was the first um, immigration, immigration contact with the U.S. immigration. And of course, upon coming up to the, to the officer, I had to explain why I'm here, which I couldn't do in English language. Although I had some, some of it, about three years of it, I couldn't, they couldn't understand what I was saying. None of us had any money for anything. I mean, I came to the United States with like $93.50. Like Volavender and Father Richard, Kroll arrived at Orchard Lake with limited funds and English language skills, but he had something other seminarians didn't have, a powerful mentor in Poland. Kroll grew up in a small village in southern Poland, but in 1988, at age 18, he landed in Gdansk, the beating heart of the anti-communist movement called Solidarity, headed up by Lech Walesa, a shipyard electrician who rose to become Poland's first democratically elected president in 1990. It was a dramatic time in Polish history. A pole was occupying the chair of St. Peter. Communism was near collapse. Kroll was studying at the Seminary of Christ the King in Gdansk. And sources tell Church Militant his mentor was Father Henrik Jankowski. Working alongside Wałęsa, Jankowski was known as the chaplain of Solidarity. Kroll's mentor was a hero until recently. After his death in 2010, his long history of sex abuse and collaboration with the communists came to light. Poles were so furious they pulled down his statue erected in front of his parish. 
Sources also tell Church Militant it was Jankowski who arranged for Kroll to transfer to Orchard Lake Seminary when excessive drinking brought into question Kroll's suitability for the priesthood. After two years of getting acclimated to American culture, Kroll transferred in 1996 to Immaculate Conception Seminary at Seton Hall University in the Archdiocese of Newark, New Jersey. So there were five seminarians and one archbishop, and there were five beds. That meant that uh, one of those seminarians had to sleep in McCarrick's bed. From 1986 to 2000, Theodore McCarrick reigned over the Archdiocese of Newark, abusing minors and I seminarians. Kroll may have been among them. In 2019, Seton Hall University conducted its own investigation of those years and confirmed McCarrick had been sexually harassing seminarians for years. Kroll was completing his seminary study under the nation's most skilled sexual predator. Quickly, Kroll's Polish ties were exploited, and he was appointed president of the John Paul II Foundation based in New Jersey. That position made him the chief Polish-American fundraiser in the U.S., with access to the nation's top Catholic donors and clergy all eager for access to the beloved Pope John Paul. Back at his alma mater in Detroit, Kroll quickly established a network of gay Polish clergy who would gather at their unofficial party house, the rectory at Sweetest Heart of Mary. According to the lawsuit, during this period, while he lived on campus at Orchard Lake, Kroll also kept a room and attended parties at the Sweetest Heart of Mary Church Rectory in Detroit. There, witnesses allege that Kroll and others would engage in sexual activity with seminarians. Rumors about sexual activity with seminarians and other sexual misconduct swirled around Kroll during this time at Orchard Lake Schools from 2006 to 2011. Church militant sources confirm Kroll kept a private suite at the rectory. They also allege he often invited retired auxiliary bishop Francis Reese to share the suite with him. Parish pastor Father Mark Borkowski was allegedly a willing host and participant in the gay gang. Borkowski, along with a gay parishioner, recruited a recently released parolee, Nathan Culbertson, to assist with parish maintenance. Within weeks, Culbertson overdosed and died his body found in the rectory's upstairs bathtub. The cemetery custodian who knew Culbertson put it this way. He had the house to himself, he decided to relax and get a buzz, but he got more than he bargained for. The 35-year-old Culbertson was given a burial plot and headstone in the Polish parish's cemetery. It was during this period Kroll was traveling to Poland to recruit students. He established a satellite campus in Krakow to further assist in this effort. Father Bernard Hoynotsky is an example of the kind of students who were admitted and ordained. Within six months of being placed in a parish, he was arrested and charged with indecent exposure. Or well, Father Marcin Dujak, another Orchard Lake trained priest, under fire from his parishioners, for lavish spending on a backyard privacy fence for his hot tub. You can find a Jack on Grinder, a dating site for homosexuals, where he shares photos of his private parts. The lawsuit also claims Kroll would often seek out and recruit students who had failed out of seminary in Poland or who had issues with alcohol or sexual matters, students with profiles similar to his. Shortly after Culberson's death, Kroll returned to New Jersey where, among other responsibilities, he headed up the St. John Paul II Be Not Afraid Center. Based in Linden, New Jersey, the nonprofit's mission was to study, promote, and disseminate the teachings that St. John Paul II preached during his pontificate, as well as to promote and support the work of building the International Center of St. John Paul II in Krakow. The website also reveals, since the beginning of the foundation's activity, Cardinal Stanislav Jivish of Krakow also actively supported its activities, and whenever he is in the United States, 
He always visits the foundation's office in Linden. Jeevish was Pope John Paul's right-hand man throughout his pontificate. No one was given access to John Paul without Jeevish's okay. He began working closely with Kroll in the U.S. to raise money for an international center honoring the Polish Pope in his hometown of Krakow. Kroll's reputation as a master fundraiser grew. In 2017, when Orchard Lake Schools was in a search for a new chancellor, Kroll's name was put forward. The lawsuit alleges, quote, Two priests who had worked with Kroll at Orchard Lake Schools in the past raised concerns with the Orchard Lake Schools Board of Regents regarding Kroll's behavior. Those concerns included Kroll's rumored sexual misconduct when he had served as dean and vice rector. Those concerns were ignored, and Kroll was appointed chancellor in 2018. <laughs> Within months, he commissioned a lavish recruitment video in Polish that prominently featured Cardinal Dziwisz. Myślenice i TV, wasza telewizja internetowa. As recently as two years ago, that relationship would have been helpful for recruitment of Polish seminarians, but not anymore. Within the last 24 months, Dziwisz has come under close scrutiny in Poland for his role in covering up sex abuse. The day before the Vatican released the McCarrick Report, the Polish television equivalent of 60 Minutes aired a scathing, in-depth investigation suggesting Jeevish was the mastermind behind the Vatican's cover-up. Pope John Paul's particular secretary is mentioned 45 times in the McCarrick Report, documenting the close relationship between the two men, particularly in connection with raising funds for the Pope's charitable work around the world. So Jeevish, directly associated with clergy sex abuse cover-up, was also directly involved in helping Kroll recruit unsuspecting Polish seminarians to homosexual-friendly Detroit. The role of Detroit's Archbishop, Alan Vigneron, cannot be ignored in all this. Featuring prominently in Kroll's recruitment film, Vigneron also serves on Orchard Lake's Board of Trustees. He presided at Kroll's installation as chancellor and has consistently refused to investigate allegations against Kroll. Victims appealed directly to Vigneron, but were offered no help by him as a cone of silence descended. As an Orchard Lake trustee, he's been privy to detailed concerns about the seminary since 2009, but has failed to act. As was mentioned earlier, in 2017, when the Board of Trustees was considering Kroll's candidacy for chancellor, allegations of Kroll's sexual misconduct were raised and ultimately ignored. And then, in August 2019, an Orchard Lake trustee, close to many seminarians and priests, resigned over Kroll's misconduct. She shared information about Kroll's behavior with the Archbishop, but was told essentially that Archbishop Vigneron was not interested in discussing these issues with her unless she had first-hand knowledge of misconduct. Church Militant contacted the Archbishop, asking what steps he's taken in light of the sexual misconduct allegations. We received no response. May it be done to me according to your word. Sources tell Church Militant Father Kroll is currently living in his Polish hometown, Stavisha, where he built a lavish home. Meanwhile, with two lawsuits pending, Orchard Lake's future hangs in the balance. Word on the street is the Chaldean Catholic community would like to purchase the campus. The crisis at Orchard Lake confirms the homosexual rot festering in the Archdiocese of Detroit, and it highlights Archbishop Vigneron's flawed leadership whose first priority appears to be protecting the reputation of the archdiocese rather than victims, and who's turning a blind eye to abuse and corruption right under his nose and actively participating in it. Christine Christlieb, Church Militant, Detroit.